Fox has a long history of not apologizing for some of the things that uh, have invited controversy uh, over the years. Opinion is not news and take, so instead of uh, backing down, they sometimes double down. Uh, it can uh, create a kind of car wreck phenomenon in which people tune in just to hear you say an extreme thing. You don't say! Hello and welcome back all you amazing people who I can always count on to hit that like button and leave a comment after the video. Right? Right? No, you idiot! As we prepare to gorge ourselves for Thanksgiving and read all those inevitable left-wing articles about how racist it and your family are, take a moment to enjoy this pompous Washington Post writer, Paul Farhi, get absolutely rolled attacking the concept of citizen journalism. <laughs> And it's not like we all probably wouldn't agree that citizen journalism does open up the possibility to shoddy reporting. The idea that the so-called pros are any better is provably laughable. You know what else is a joke? Joe Biden's economy, which is why you should check out this free coin offer from Noble Gold. I think it's time to ask yourself, are you new to investing and do you have savings that need protecting? Right now with the Middle East war, the Ukraine war, and maybe Taiwan very soon, you need a playbook that's safe. Allocate some gold right now and avoid the frenzied panic of the unprepared. When fear reigns, gold protects the wise. Noble Gold Investments offers a free five ounce America the Beautiful coin with new IRAs this month. Shield your savings with the Noble Gold Investments IRA. Go to noblegoldinvestments.com right now. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. The only gold company I trust. And remember, there's always risk in investment and there is no guarantees of any kind. So Paul apparently woke up today triggered about citizen journalists and took to Twitter to let everybody know, saying, quote, Someone invented the phrase citizen journalism a few years ago to describe amateurs doing the work of pros. Yes, it occasionally works, but probably no more often than citizen cop, citizen attorney, or citizen soldiers. I'm sorry, I just started hearing really loud circus music in my head. What did you say? <laughs> oh God, are you serious? Yeah, who ever heard of citizen cops, citizen attorneys, or citizen soldiers? So something that I I wish that people knew about the DC National Guard is that we are citizen soldiers. And to that point, you saw in the intro that Paul Farhi believes that he himself is an impartial source of information. Except Paul Farhi was a big proponent of the now debunked Steele dossier. In fact, as we know, the Washington Post was one of the biggest drivers of the Russian collusion coup attempt by Democrats, which arguably broke the country and destroyed any hope of a large majority of the country never trusting the media again. Most surprising thing about Clinton's involvement with the Steele dossier, aside from paying for it, is why her campaign didn't make more of it. If this is accurate, put another check mark next to the Steele dossier. <laughs> <laughs> so professional. One of Papadopoulos' Russian link sources is known as the Professor. So great when real life is like a Batman villain. So professional. Isn't it weird how every single story he gets wrong cuts against his political opponents? Somehow he never smears Democrats. Weird. Like when it came to Brett Kavanaugh and the Washington Post went full force on the gang R-word story despite zero evidence. And of course, there was Paul Farhi to say the idea that Democrats and the media coordinated to smear Brett Kavanaugh was a conspiracy theory. And then predictably, when it came to the Wuhan lab leak story, Paul took the well-traveled professional journalist path of again, wrongly dismissing it as a conspiracy theory. So this guy is anything but impartial or professional. And is everything he accuses citizen journalism of being. Now get your popcorn because Twitter users let him have it and it's hilarious. Citizen journalism was made popular by Andrew Breitbart and it was because the corporate media lies so much and is so wrong about everything. Kind of describes you regarding the Steele dossier. <laughs> Those other professionals have standards. Most journalists nowadays can't even use proper grammar in their haste to get the story wrong. <laughs> it was a good one. Yes, and as I've pointed out many times in the past, every single time the media gets one of these stories wrong, it always cuts against the Republicans, never ever Democrats. Somehow these mainstream media fake stories are never targeted at Democrats. And I challenge anybody to prove me wrong in the comments. Yes, it takes a lot of insular credentialism to get the 2016 election, Russian collusion, the COVID lab leak, and Hunter Biden's laptop so wrong, while simultaneously demanding censorship of those who saw the truth all along. Repent! 
right? Exactly. I think that about sums it up. When you look at any polls for the last 20 years, trust in media has been plummeting. And at this point, the only group that really shows any trust in the media are Democrats. And if you look on Twitter, his original post is completely ratioed at this point. So maybe we're starting to see a change in the Overton window. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that and found it informative. I do plan on uploading a video every day this week, so keep checking back. See you on the next one.